This week on The Choice. When I first started WWO, the therapeutic benefit provided by outdoor activities was recognized by an Army general in charge of all East Coast medicine at that time, who was not an outdoorsman, he was a golfer. He was 100% right. We're not about the kill. We're not about the size of the trophy. We use the challenge and the motivation of the hunt to inspire our warriors to push forward. Oh, big. Yes, look at him. What do you say? What a hunt. That was unbelievable. This is a beautiful bear. Welcome this week's The Choice. And you know, forever, it's always been about her and I having fun, kidding yeah. around, busting each and, other's, you know what. having RJ and some of our friends yep. and our family hunting with us. But this week is something different and we're gonna be a little more serious. Um, first off, we wanna, we wanna thank Wounded Warrior Outdoors. We wanna thank them not only for the honor and the privilege to, to spend a, an adventure with them, but to understand and to actually, and I, I'm speaking on for all of us, RJ, Vicky, and I, our whole crew, um, to experience something that have changed our lives forever. And we're gonna share some of that with you today. We hope you enjoy the show. WWO started as, a, as basically a, a concept in about 2006, uh, in the height of the war for when over in Iraq and Afghanistan. And the, my original thought when I started it was just to take a few guys out hunting and fishing on, on property that I own or in places and destinations that I go. Um, cor in the real world, we have our own corporation and we entertain our clients. We're not golfers, we're outdoorsmen, so we tend to entertain our clients in, in outdoor environments. And we just included or started including some wounded warriors on our trips. And um, based on the success of those early trips, it blossomed into what it is today. The way we function as an organization, it, it's important for us to stay and repetitively visit the same destinations because we're not about gifting the warriors a lot of uh, rifles and fishing equipment or outdoor gear. That's not what this program is about. So what we do is we return to the same destinations every year. We uh, fully equip those destinations for, with whatever product we may need or whatever equipment we need to handle warriors of injuries that we're not aware of because we typically don't find out many details other than a basic application form regarding the warriors limitations or injuries till about two weeks before the hunt or fishing trip so we we have to be ready and we have to be able to adapt and we did that this week uh, we go to 14 a group destinations a year where an average group depending on the destination or the location will be anywhere from six to ten warriors we have typically about two and a half volunteers per warrior on the trip and we go to those same 14 destinations every year and in addition what we have is outdoorsmen throughout the United States generously open up we call them one-off opportunities where they may have an opportunity for somebody to harvest a cow elk or a bull elk or a, a white-tailed deer or, or a pronghorn antelope or go on a unique waterfowl trip or whatever that is. So uh, we, hit, we budget for 25 one-off operations where we can reach in and, and bring some of our alumni back and continue to challenge them. So we, are, we host about 160 warriors a year. 
You okay? Yeah. Okay. That's like a hot yeah. knife and butter, ain't it? Use that again. It went like straight through. <laughs> it scared me. I thought I was gonna hit a dog or something. <laughs> That was exciting. We can drive around fine. and pick it up. That thing's pretty wicked looking, isn't it? Yeah. Look at that. that thing's about. Turn your blade sideways so you can see it. A little more. A little more. You know, I went on my first uh, WWO trip back in 2012, uh, you know, right at uh, nine months after my injury. And, uh, you know what what that trip did for me uh, you know was was incredible and so basically I wanted to be able to pay that forward and uh, let other warriors uh, experience that same opportunity so I basically had to beg and plead uh, with Ron in order to um, volunteer because you know the last thing that he wants to do is put a, uh, a warrior on display or somehow exploit them or, or feel like he's exploiting them. So it took a lot of um, convincing in order for him to let me uh, kind of go out and, and talk about WWO with others. And, you know, fast forward to, to where we're at now and, and uh, you know, I've been where a lot of these warriors that with new injuries, um, you know, have been and I know how to navigate the system. And so I'm just kind of here to, to kind of help them out in the you know the transition aspect of it you know setting setting yourself up for success after your transition and then you know as, as far as um, being able to be on the trip for me personally you know i get to reconnect with um, you know a lot of my buddies that uh, you know i haven't seen in, in eight years you know or last time we served together i mean you got daniel here this week i haven't seen him since 2009 i think 2009 or 2010 so um, it's always good you know for me one because i, I I love the organization and what it's done for me and I love the people in it. And so it's, it's just like a family coming back home and seeing family and, uh, you know, bringing my fellow brothers into that, into that family. And so it's a, uh, it's a continually growing um, group of people and it just, it gets better every time. I appreciate it. Yeah. Good shooting. Good time. You met with a hog. We, the way we function as an organization, it, it's important for us to stay and repetitively visit the same destinations because we're not about gifting the warriors a lot of uh, rifles and fishing equipment or outdoor gear. That's not what this program's about. So what we do is we return to the same destinations every year. We uh, fully equip those destinations for, with whatever product we may need or whatever equipment we need to uh, handle warriors of injuries that we're not aware of because we typically don't find out many details other than a basic application form regarding the warriors limitations or injuries till about two weeks before the hunt or fishing trip so we we have to be ready and we have to be able to adapt and we did that this week we're about challenging individuals to go beyond what they perceive as their limitations and challenging them to become able. We're not about disability, we're about ability. We spotted a gator down here about 150 yards, which is about 100 yards more than we want to take a shot at. He looks like a good one. He's, he appears to be a dead animal here that he's guarding or eating on. So we're gonna just go up here and get set up with the proper angle and just, it's gonna be a waiting game for a little bit. So we'll see what happens, might get lucky. I don't know the individual challenges each warrior faces, so they all overcome challenge and make them aware of what the outdoors can do for them, what the outdoor community can do for them in, the, in, the, in a sense of replacing, to a certain degree, the, the brotherhood that exists within the military.
when I first started WWO, the therapeutic nature was not one that was recognized by me. It was one, sometimes they, the old saying goes, you can't see the forest for the trees. And the, the therapeutic benefit provided by outdoor activities was recognized by an army general in charge of all East Coast medicine at that time, who was not an outdoorsman, he was a golfer. And he told me that we were missing the boat by not seeing the, the therapeutic potential of our trips. And he was 100% right. I never saw that, never anticipated that. And that is the focal point of what we do. We're not about the kill. We're not about the size of the trophy. We use the, the challenge and the motivation of the hunt to inspire our warriors to push forward. And that is exactly what happens. Dead gator. <laughs> awesome Finally. job. Awesome job. <laughs> That's awesome. That's your first gator. You did a good job. <laughs> You scared four and finally got this one. Just snap it and it's all yours. Is it in there? Yep. You're the owner. Being on any Wounded Warrior Outdoors trip, they all have the same meaning for me and that's to spend time with my brothers and sisters in arms you know, separating from the military you seek that companionship that you had when you were in the military and a program like this allows you to have that back in your life um, and for a lot of our warriors that we have on these trips they've been able to sleep or relax for the first time in months or years and it's because they know there's another warrior that's sharing a bunk next to them or sharing a room with them or whatever. And uh, I think that's a really nice thing to know that, you know, that it brings these guys and gals back together so that they can truly relax, truly be themselves again and know that they're not being judged in any way, shape or form uh, for whatever their injuries may be. I got involved with WWO back in 2012. Um, back in California at Balboa Hospital where I met Matt Amos and a couple of the other guys. And uh, from there, it's just kind of spiraled. Um, Ron and Lisa have become like another family towards me, just like WWO has. And all these guys, in my opinion, are family and always will be. Um, it's an amazing organization that will help you out with anything. And truly, if just to be on these trips is just grateful. Um, you can forget about everything back in there in the real world come out here and just kind of let your mind free. For me, this is therapy. I don't like talking to doctors or anybody else like that. Maybe my brother's here and there, but for me, this is therapy. It helps me clear my mind and get a nice clear head and hang out with great people. Ooh, he's dead. Thank you, WWO, for this amazing opportunity. Thank you, Hoppy, for my God. <laughs> and thank all you wonderful people that had me out here. Woo! <laughs> one shot, one kill. Marines, always. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't doubt. <laughs> you crack me up. And thank you so much for Wounded Warrior Outdoors for this amazing opportunity. Let's see, we all joined to because we wanted to make things better. We wanted to go, you know, do do things and represent our country and all those things. But when we get out we kind of lose a sense of purpose when well, this you know WWO is given that opportunity for you to have that purpose again and for you to have the ability to serve and and lead and take take initiative and be able to to be yourself and use those things that we learned while we were in to help everybody out here and just lifts you up to a higher level so that when you have to go back, it's you can go about it with a different perspective and you have a clear mind and can make things happen.
the main motivation for me to start WWO was guilt. It was guilt for not having served. It wasn't that I wasn't willing to serve. It was I was just in that age class where a few years too young for Vietnam, a few years too old for Desert Storm. And it took me a long time to realize that uh, I had been privileged and blessed to have this life of opportunity, but I had never done anything to, to, to pay my dues, so to speak. And I, my prediction would be there's a lot of other people out there that feel the same way. Because of age, uh, whatever it would be, maybe injury or, or disability on your own side, that you haven't had the ability to serve or you don't serve or didn't serve, but you can. Uh, there's countless opportunities to take warriors within your own community and let them shoot that extra doe that you don't need on your property or let them take a turkey or take them fishing or just take them out for an afternoon. Um, service our service in no way compares to the service and sacrifice that has been made on our behalf, but it's all we can do. It's, uh, and I challenge the people out there to do that, to do just that. You have wounded warriors within your community war who's ever watching this that need you. That, and it's not, it doesn't come at a high cost. It just comes at time and the ability to, the, the ability to take somebody. And uh, your life will be enriched and touched like you can't imagine. You know, the, the way that this program helps warriors to come to it, 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 every warrior experiences something differently. And it doesn't matter what that person's dealing with. It might be a physical injury. It might be, a, you know, a, uh, an emotional injury. Um, and it, it, it's fun to see the, the two groups come together and really just act as one because when we're all together, um, you know, again, like I said before, it's like it's just like a family. It's like you're coming home, and we all know what each other has been through, and uh, we can relate to those instances. Whereas, you know, when you leave this space or you leave the military, um, you know, it's it's hard to talk to people about your experiences because they just they don't understand. They want to, um, but they they just can't because they haven't been there and they haven't seen it. So, um, and. It's just, a, it, it's pretty amazing to watch these warriors as they work through the week. Um, you know, everybody's kind of standoffish at first. They're a little quiet. Um, and I'm, I'm a quiet person myself. I like to sit back and observe and just kind of see how everybody works. And and watching them as they progress through the week kind of open nice. up and, and, and do things that they didn't think they could do um, and talk about things that they, they normally can't talk about, you know. And, and that's one of the biggest things for me is, um, you know, I have no issues talking about my injury, you know, um, what happened and, um, and and a lot of people do have an issue with that and so to see them kind of come out of their shell and be able to talk about it because that's where the healing takes place is to be able to talk about it and leave the emotion out of it. It's an event that happened but it's in the past and you know what I really care about with these warriors is where they're at now and where they want to be and what steps do we need to take in order to get um, to that goal of where they want to be. I don't think we could say it or show it any better way. Do you understand what the outdoors truly means to everybody? How it can take someone from such a deep, dark spot and give them hope, take the desperation away? Folks, I'm telling you, this has changed our lives forever. It's changed our whole entire crew. Our family never understood what these warriors do have done for us and what they continue to do. Not only them, but the first responders and everybody. The bottom line here is all kidding aside, we thank all of them from the bottom of our hearts and souls. Absolutely. To have the liberties and the freedoms that we take for granted every day. Remember, count your blessings every day. Thank the good Lord up above and just remember to be there for anyone who may need you. You never know what other what other things people are dealing with inside. We want to thank you guys for watching this week's choice. We hope it helped you change a little bit too. We'll see you next week.